worship on this second Sunday of Easter, we're glad that you're here. We begin with thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let's, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Today's Gospel reading is taken from John 20, verses 19 through 31. The story of Easter continues as the risen Jesus appears to his disciples. His words to Thomas offer a blessing to all who entrust themselves in faith to the risen Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand on his side, I will not believe. A week after, a week later, that his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through believing you may have life in his name. Hi everyone, it's time for the children's sermon. So come on up a little bit closer where you can see and hear really well. In our gospel story today, there are so many really cool things going on. But I want to tell you just about a couple of them first, about three of them, and then really talk about one of them that's really special. Okay? You might have heard of this story before. They call it Doubting Thomas. We'll get to that in a minute, but I don't think that's a very fair title. So one of the cool things that's happening in our gospel story is that Jesus walks through a locked door twice. Now, maybe after feeding thousands of people with just a couple of fish and turning water into wine and, you know, saving the whole world from sin and death, walking through a locked door might seem like kind of small potatoes, but I think it's cool anyway. The second cool thing he does is that Jesus breathes onto the disciples the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's a really special thing. Then he comes back to get Thomas. That, I think, is the, one of the very most important things that happens in this story. So it's a little bit after Easter, and the disciples are all hanging out together in a room of a house, and the door happens to be locked. Well, Jesus just appears to them in spite of the fact that the door is locked. He got in anyway. And he says to them, peace be with you. As my father sent me, so I send you. That is a really powerful thing to say and a topic for another whole conversation. But the next thing that he does is he shows them his hands and his side where he was hurt while he was crucified and the scars that are there. And when he does, then the disciples get excited. They're like, oh, Jesus, we're so happy to see him again. So I'm sure that was kind of confusing there for a few minutes, right? Well, then Jesus blew on them and gave them the Holy Spirit. Well, the thing about that special time that they all just shared together is that Thomas wasn't with them. Now, I don't know where he was, and I'm not sure if it even matters very much. But he didn't get to see everything that they did. And so when they told him about it, they were like, Thomas, 
this is just amazing. This thing happened. Jesus just came in and he had his so just his scars, everything like that. And Thomas is no fool. Thomas is like not that easily persuaded. Thomas is like, unless I see the marks on the nails from the nails on his hands and can put my my hand in his side, I'm not gonna believe it. Well, Jesus heard Thomas's cry. Because a week later, when Thomas was with the disciples, the same thing happened all again. Jesus appeared through the locked door and he showed Thomas his hands and he let him touch his side. And then Thomas cried out, oh my Lord, it's Jesus. And he was so excited, just like the other disciples were. Now, some people like to tell this story and say, don't be like Thomas. You should just believe everything right away and have faith without any kind of evidence or proof or anything like that. And of course, we're never going to have proof exactly in order of our, of our faith, of the things that we read in the Bible, of, of all of the, the, the important things that we learn in church and all of that, right? We're not going to have proof of most of it, but we can still have faith. The important thing is that Jesus understands that. Jesus understands that sometimes our faith is even stronger when we question things a little bit first, right? If I just believe anything I hear, then who knows? I might believe in Jesus. I might believe any old thing, right? Who knows what next, what my next thing will be. But when we take time to question and learn and pray, our faith deepens. Yeah, I think, I think God is big enough for all of our questions. And I think that Jesus comes back for all of us, just like he came back for Thomas. He knows our needs. He understands, just like he understood what Thomas needed. Do you want to pray with me about that? Dear God, thanks so much for Thomas. Thanks for his brave words for questioning things, for being able to, to say what he feels. Thank you that Jesus came back to visit Thomas again, that, Tom, that Jesus knew what Thomas needed, and that Jesus knows what we need to. Help us to pray, to ask questions, to read, to learn, to grow. Help us to grow in our faith and to share it with others. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week. Welcome, everybody. A few moments ago, uh, you heard our gospel read, the story of Jesus appearing to his disciples and then also to Thomas a week later. And uh, Pastor Elizabeth and I have been kicking this story around a little bit. And I, for <laughs> one, uh, really wasn't sure where to go with it, partly because there's so much richness in all of it. So you can jump off in a whole bunch of ways. So to be truthful, what I did uh, late this morning was just sit down with the story again and start to write it out, wondering uh, what it would have been for Thomas and maybe another one of the disciples. So we're going to offer this now. And the voices of two of them, recognizing that at least Thomas is a male voice and I'm not, but I'm going to offer what, what I uh, wonder at what his experience must have been. So we're going to do a little back and forth like that. And then... Um, little reflection afterwards okay so here we go I am Thomas I have to say I I don't find it at all fair that everyone else was raising their eyebrows and wondering about where I was last week when Jesus showed up I'll tell you the truth I was exhausted I mean I I wasn't there I couldn't bring myself to be there to watch the torture play out that Friday but I heard about it about all of it. I couldn't sleep Friday night or Saturday either. Finally, I just went home. Felt like I needed to be with family, to spend a little time with uh, my wife and kids to try to embrace life again. And to tell you the truth, it, it just didn't feel like it would be good for my soul to be gathered together with the noise and energy and everything else going on with all the rest of the disciples, I just needed to get away. So I went home. 
although it all of this seemed like it just wouldn't let me go. And I picked up this strange rumor that the story wasn't quite done yet. So I went and caught up with uh, James and John and Peter too. And they, they told me the most remarkable things about how the, the women went to the tomb and found the stone rolled away and the body wasn't there about how Peter and John went to see for themselves and all that was left there were the grave clothes. And then I heard that Jesus was showing up again. And that didn't make sense. Not the least little bit. I mean, I know what death looks like. And I know that this side of whatever it is God has in store for us, there's no coming back from that. Only they seem so convinced. So certain. That finally I went back. Back to where uh, the others said they had seen him before. Back behind those locked door down doors. I'm one of the other disciples who was there that first time Jesus showed up that Sunday night after that awful Friday. I didn't know where else to be to tell you the truth. And it helped me to be with others who'd also been with Jesus all these years. Not that many of us had handled those last few days well at all I mean the women stayed but the rest of us just couldn't stand and, and wait and watch for the inevitable the humiliation the suffering torturing it was just too much so I left only I felt I felt like I needed others all the rest of it, of, of the others around me I didn't know what would happen next. Neither did they, whether they were coming for us next, whether they were going to kill us. I think we felt like there was some safety in numbers or at least we would be together, those of us who understood, those of us who shared the grief that we had all experienced. So I went back. And yes, we were afraid and felt guilty. And there was even some, even some finger pointing going on, blaming, you know. And the doors were locked. Oh, we were stuck in a dark place. But even so, it felt somehow safer and better to be together. And then Jesus was there. I have no idea how he got in, but looking back, it shouldn't have surprised us, should it? He was always able to do more than we ever could have imagined. I mean, I just think about the thousands of people that we saw Jesus feed or the countless ones who were healed or those lives which were turned around just because of his teaching. So there he was. And, you know, all he did was speak words of peace. Peace be with you, he said. And then as if to prove it was really him, he showed us those wounds in his hands and his side. I knew it already deep down, but that was real proof to be sure. And then reminding us that God had so much more in store for us than hiding behind locked doors. He told us he was sending us out and then he breathed on us. It took me right back to God breathing life into Adam and to Ezekiel's ancient vision of God giving breath again to a field of dry bones. And I couldn't help but wonder what it would mean in Jesus breathing on us, would we too be alive, maybe in ways we never knew before, especially, as he said, in giving forgiveness? I mean, if forgiveness is life, won't that just change everything? It's Thomas here again. So I went. Turns out that, yes, Jesus showed up again. 
I wouldn't be surprised at all if he knew I needed what the rest had gotten that week before. Just a glimpse. Oh, I know I was a little belligerent about it, but until I saw him, I couldn't really take it in. I, so I was insistent that I be able to actually touch those wounds he still carried. Turns out I didn't need to. It was enough to see his face, to hear his voice, to know his presence. And you know, when he spoke that promise and gift of peace, I could feel it deep down, that, that peace that takes away fear, that heals wounds old and new, that peace that makes us whole and gives us purpose, the peace that is the source and meaning of life itself. I was most blessed to be there. And I could have shouted to the world in that moment that I knew who Jesus was and that I would never be the same again because he was and is, in fact, my Lord and my God. And, you know, Jesus spoke next of all those who would come later. He spoke of them not being able to see as we did. Even so, even then, I wondered at how Jesus would make his presence known to the hearts of all, all those who would later believe. I wondered how he would make his way through all the locked doors behind which people are always imprisoned and afraid. I wondered how it will change the world when his peace enfolds people and sets them free to go out into the world with words of grace and words of forgiveness, even as he sent us. And sends us now. And sends us now. Amen. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and to answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God. Unite the whole church on earth, so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You proclaim the blessing of life forevermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation. Restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. You direct the nations, O God. Guide all in authority that they shepherd their peoples in the ways of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others, especially those without food or shelter, those who find themselves unsafe in relationships and those who are lonely and alone. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. Give us fellowship with one another in this faith community, in the partnership between Bethlehem Lutheran Church and First Lutheran Church. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together so that we live in love for one another and our joy may be complete. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, your mercy is great. You share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <laughs>